Hi friends, today I'm gonna to show you how to can potatoes in a pressure canner. Now we have a garden, and so we have a lot of potatoes. I've got a five gallon bucket here, I'll show you. And they're just freshly out of the ground, so they're not clean or anything. These are Yukon Golds, is what we planted. Now when you're canning potatoes, the best potatoes to can are the, your gold potatoes or your red potatoes. Your russet potatoes tend to have more of a starch to them. So they, they're they good, but we'll just say these are better. <laughs> okay, so they'll have less of a starch content in your in your jars later on, especially after they've set on your, uh, your, your shelves for six, five, six months, then the starch really starts coming out. And, but your Yukons and your Golds and your um, Reds, uh, really tend to have less. And, all right, I've got them all separated. This is my mediums, these are my smalls, and then the ones that we're gonna be using today are my larger ones. So I'm not going to wash all of these larger ones that I think I might use. I'm gonna wash them just a few at a time, so um, if I don't need them, they will preserve well. potatoes washed. I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to do a few at a time and then I'm going to start peeling them. Some people leave the peelings on. I don't want to do that. Not not for canning. Uh, just be, for safety reasons. Now, if I'm doing them fresh and you've got the Yukon Golds or the Reds, I love to leave the, the skins on. So, um, but just, just this time, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm going to just do a few at a time, like I said, and then I'm going to put them in this strainer, peel, peel a few at a time, put them in that strainer, wash them again, and then I'm going to dice them, measure them in this jar, and then put them in this bowl of cold water. So I have this mini done and I'm going to, I like to rinse mine, just one, one quick rinse really quick. And then we're going to cut them in about one inch cubes. You can use a little um, slicer thing if you have one. I like just doing it like this. Cut it in half and then cut it in about three. And then just one about went one inch over. Just like that. And you've got a a good cube. All right, now I'm gonna put them in this cold bowl of water to uh, keep so they don't turn. And you can actually do this the day before or whatever. And it does help get some of the starch out when you do do that. So if you find a cell, a good cell on potatoes and uh, you can do you can uh, you can do this and you can do it in steps. All right, I'm gonna. You know what? I don't know what I'm thinking. Got to talking with y'all. I want to put these in here first, so I want to measure. Since since today I'm doing seven quarts, I'm not. I don't want to do any extra because I want to dehydrate some too. Um, I want to measure seven of these. And uh, then I'm gonna put put it in my water. So if you wanna do, you don't have to do it like, like I'm doing it. You can just kind of estimate if you want to. That was two potatoes. So maybe three, pota uh, three good potatoes will fill uh, a wide mouth jar. I've got actually a couple of wide, wide mouth, but I'm also doing some of the regular. Let's just see. You don't want to overfill potatoes either. And it might be four potatoes. 
you don't, like I said, you don't have to do it like I am. I'm just not wanting to do any extra. So probably this small one will be one jar. Okay, I will be back after I have sliced all my potatoes and got them in my bowl. Okay, so I finally finished filling the potatoes. That's the hard part. And we've got seven quarts here. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to boil these for two minutes. Now I know if you look at the canning, all of the canning things, they will say 10 minutes. But if you do that, it's gonna be mush and then you're gonna, they're not gonna be good for anything but mashed potatoes. So, we are going to do two minutes. And uh, so we're gonna get this in a pot, cover it with water, and bring it to a boil for the two minutes, and then we can start putting them in our jars. Once it comes to a boil, we will boil for two minutes. For our potatoes to come to a boil, I'm going to talk to you about what you need as far as tools. If, if you go to any place that sells canning supplies, you're going to see a little kit. And it comes with uh, these four things. A funnel, a jar lifter, for sure need this a plastic um, debubbler, and then this side shows you your headspace, a little measure for that. And then this little thing right here is a magnet, and that is to lift your jars out of the water, uh, or your um, lids, your flats. And so what you wanna do is you wanna get a pan. Now they do say that you don't have to do this anymore, but, um, but I am old fashioned, so I like to go ahead and do it. And I also, we have a well, so I, I know it's a good water and everything, but I like to use just really purified water for anything to do when I'm canning. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of water in here and we're gonna bring this to a boil. And if you will put your flats in every other direction, it will be easier to get them out. They won't stick together, okay? So you wanna bring these to a boil um, when we get ready to fill our jars. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back here. And then you want another, uh, either a pot or a kettle. Um, you can use a kettle. I'm gonna use a pot because I like to use a ladle. And I'm going to uh, have some more boiling water to fill the jars because we're not gonna use this water from this um, pot because that's gonna be way too starchy. We're gonna have fresh water. And so we're gonna, this is what we're gonna use for that. So we're gonna have this boiling as well. And then as far as your canner, uh, depending on what kind of canner you have, uh, you're gonna need to fill up, uh, put some water in it. Um, most of them have, I think require two to three uh, quarts of water. Mine actually has a line inside there, a, the, a visual line that you can see. So I just fill it to there. So I'm gonna get my two waters to boiling. They'll be ready. And when my jars come out of the dishwasher, we can start filling these jars. Okay, so our potatoes have boiled two minutes and I've got all my hot jars here, just come out of the dishwasher, my flats in the boiling water and then my boiling water to top it off with. So let me move my potatoes over here.
and we will start um, putting them in our jars. I have a slotted spoon here. You don't want to pack these, okay? They need they need some room. So you can just shake them down. You want about a half of a headspace. That's probably good. So I'm going to fill all of these jars and I'll be back. Okay, so we have all of these jars filled. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this over here. So we do not want to use that water. And we're going to use this, this water here, this clean water that we, that did, we did earlier. We, it's boiling. So let's start filling them. We're going to fill all of these jars with this boiling water. And we'll be right back. Okay, now that we've got all of these filled, we want to use our little tool to get all of the air bubbles out. Now you'll want to make sure you do this step. Don't skip it because um, if you do, your potatoes won't have the water like siphon out. It'll, it'll, it won't look good. You'll be sad that it's not pretty. So once you feel like you got all the air bubbles out and it looks like it's gone down a little bit and it needs more liquid, just put some more in there, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do all of these and then we'll add liquid to the ones that need it. Like that one, that one did go down. That one must have had quite a few air bubbles in it. So you just need to go, I usually go around five, six, seven times. You can do it more or less, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so we have um, burped them all, and a couple of them do need a little bit more water, so I'm just going to add it. You want to add it to um, pretty much that first ring, right there at that first little notch. Just, just make sure you have enough. I, I should be using my ladle, but I could have used a kettle, I guess. Just don't overfill them. You need to make sure they have enough for the pressure. And then after we do this step, get you a um, either a really, really clean rag or a paper towel. Paper towel is what I prefer to use. So let me grab me a couple. And you're gonna clean your rims really good. And what I usually do is I just dip it in that hot water. I'll dip it in this water here with my flats. And some people use vinegar. I just, I've always have done it this way. Just make sure there's nothing there that's gonna hinder it from being, having a seal. Try not to put your finger on that top part because your fingers do have oils. Okay, so now that we have those all clean, we can start putting them in our canner. All right, this is when you're gonna take your little magnet and go get you a little, uh, stick it right on there. I think canned potatoes are pretty. <laughs> it's 
sitting on your shelf. And I am, I miscounted. I'm going to have to have another, one more um, seal. Let me grab one. And since I want this hot, I'm going to drop it down into that pan of really hot water. So that can get hot while we screw our uh, bands on. And I put these through my hot dishwasher also. I just want everything real sterilized. So you want to put these on finger tight. Don't, don't, don't just crank them down. You want this water in this to be hot. You, we've been letting it uh, heat up while we um, had our potatoes boiling. I'm gonna need one more band as well. Sometimes you just overlook And sitting there while we lower these down. You want to lower these down real gently into this hot, these are hot, and then you're going to be lowering it down into this hot canner. Now I'm going to bring you over here and let you see down in this canner. So we've lowered two of them. I have a grate down in the bottom there. Make sure that you use that grate. If yours do not come with a grate or you don't have a grate you need to get you one you don't want to put your jars straight down on the um, bottom of your canner so either get you one or you can put a couple of rags down there I have done that before and it works it works too Okay, we'll screw that last band on. We'll put our last one in there. Okay, so now we're gonna put our lid on. I've got my stove. I'm gonna turn my stove on pretty much high because we, we're gonna to try to get it up to pressure. Put my lid on. Okay, so here is my weight that I have. And we have our little vent here. I'm gonna turn it like this so it just doesn't blow underneath there. Once this starts blowing, steam that's steady not a steam that goes and then stops for a little bit and then it goes again or even just like burst you want a steady stream of steam coming out of here once that starts happening set your timer for 10 minutes okay and after the timer goes off is when we will put this weight on so i'm going to go ahead and let that just start going up i've got my fire up all the way. We will start adjusting it when we need to later on. But right now we're going to put this on high and uh, start waiting for a steady stream of steam. We have steam coming out of the canner if you can see that, but it's not a steady stream. So we're going to keep on waiting. We're getting close though. We have a steady stream now, so I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes 
And when our 10 minutes uh, timer goes off, we will put our weight on. All right, our timer has gone off, so we're gonna put our weight, our weight on there, okay? It's a 10 pound weight for me, for my area. And I'm going to turn this around, and after I do, I'm gonna turn it around so I can see the gauge. But after this, I'm not gonna to touch it again until this is done because you don't wanna be moving around a pressurized pot, okay? It just could be dangerous. So now we're going to, uh, for my area, I need 10 pounds of pressure, okay? We're uh, gonna bring it up to 10 pounds, and then we're going to maintain it with our, with our heat. Um, if it drops below 10, you're going to have to start your time over. I need 40, well, everyone need 40 minutes for potatoes, but I need 10 pounds of pressure. So once we get at 10 and maintain that for a minute or two, we'll set our timer for 40 minutes. If you're doing pints, it'll be 35 minutes. And uh, depending on your elevation, whether you're at 10 pounds of pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that up to 10 pounds. Once I have maintained that 10 pounds for a minute or two, I'm going to start my timer. Very important, like I said though, if you drop, while you're, while you're adjusting your heat, if you drop below 10, start your timer over for 40, okay? It's gotta be 40 for quarts 35 for pints at 10 pounds of pressure. Okay, so we will be back later on after our 40 minutes has gone off by and you'll get to see how beautiful they turn out. All right, I'm at 10 pounds, so I'm going to set my timer for 40 minutes and we'll be back. Keep an eye on your gauge. It's okay to go a pound or so over, but not under. Okay, our timer is fixing to go off, but before it does, I wanted to tell you that I did not use salt. Some people like to put canning salt in their canning, and I do sometimes, but I didn't do it this time with the potatoes because I plan to season the potatoes when I use them, whether it be home fries, soups, or even um, potato salad, making some kind of potato salad and you, sometimes you don't want that salt to be in there. Okay, our timer has gone off. I'm going to turn my fire off, but we are not gonna do anything with this until this gauge goes back to zero, okay? Don't, do don't touch it, don't move it, don't do anything. So we are just going to just forget about it. And um, later on when we come back and it's down to zero, then we will open it up and see what we have. Okay, our uh, gauge is to zero. So I'm gonna take off this weight and take off the lid and we'll look inside. Always take, take it off away from you because it is hot. I'll let you see down in there. Everything looks good. Making a little bit of a sound. That's okay. We're gonna let these sit. I'll, I'll probably let them sit for, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour, just to kind of accul, uh, just to kind of cool off a little bit, acclimate, and then we'll get them out. I'm gonna go ahead and get these out now. They are still a boiling inside there. You always want to put these on a towel or a cooling rack. Um, don't don't put them straight on your granite. You'll have a broke jar. I'm actually gonna put these on a cooling rack that I have. I 
We're going to just set these out and let them sit for a good 24 hours. And you'll hear any time, really, you'll start hearing um, a little ping, and that is when they seal. Maybe we'll hear one here in a minute. That's what we call beautiful music. <laughs> Seven beautiful jars here. Okay, they are so pretty. Let me let you look at them. All right, see how pretty they are and they're still bubbling. You can see them still bubbling. But we will let these sit and cool for about 24 hours and after that, do you hear that? That's the sound we love, yay. Um, after they have been about 24 hours cooling, we will come back, we will wipe the jars, take off our bands, um, store them that way. That way we know that they stay sealed, date them, and uh, that's about it, y'all. Okay, like I said, that's about it. Super, super easy. So if you see some Yukon Golds or, or Red Potatoes on sale, grab them up, can them, and uh, you'll have some beautiful jars on your shelves. Thank you for coming along with us. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, share it, or even comment. That's even better. We love to read your comments. We'll see y'all next time. Until then, keep looking to the east. Bye-bye.